And we are. Hey, everybody. Uh, Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 6, Scavengers, has just ended. And we're here to break it all down tonight on Live Long and Podcast. I'm Dave Mader, coming at you with Star Trek TV and movie reviews. Joined with great co-hosts here to break this down. we got Michael Chan. How are you doing, Michael? Good, good. Thank you. And Adam Woodward. How are you doing, Adam? Very good, thank you. All right, and we're we're getting into this. Um, let's let's talk about this episode. I really like tonight's episode. I'm just I'm not even gonna before I even ask you guys. I'm just gonna tell you I like this a lot. So um, there was there's a lot there's a lot of good uh, things tonight. Some emotional things. I think uh, um, overall a lot of fun. But uh, Michael, uh, you've you've been pretty positive all season long. I, I'm I'm not expecting a deviation here, but just to check in. There there is no deviation. Although I will say this normally. Because uh, if my daughter is having a hard time falling asleep and my brain is only half here at the beginning of an episode, I'm able to follow. But I, they threw so much exposition into the first like two minutes that I couldn't follow. And I got the gist of why Michael Burnham left the ship, but I can't remember or understand the details. But other than that, I love the episode. Yeah, well, it was an unsanctioned mission. I, it was something very... Well, no, I, I, <laughs> very I get it. It's like, what, wait, what about the burn? Wait, how did the message happen? Wait, what is this about the cat? Well, oh, okay, okay. Oh, God, oh, God my daughter's still crying. Oh, oh no. <laughs> there was a cat. There was a cat. And it had, it, it, cat! It, uh, empty ship cat. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And it was, that was basically it, right? Like, that was the setup for the episode is, where's Book? We don't know, but the cat's... Uh, who's feeding the cat? And, and there's a black box. It's not really a box, too. Yeah. Right, yes, which we, we find out is not a box. Ended up just being like, yeah, it looked like a memory stick of some kind. Yeah. It's it's dark. Almost this dark. episode felt like it, it almost needed two episodes. It was a lot in this episode. Uh, yes, it was. Or, 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 or like a mid-season movie or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The amount of information they downloaded to us in just before, in just the cold open, before the the credits rolled, uh, it was incredible. I was like, "Whoa!" Like I can't. <laughs> just the upgrades. The whole episode starts with yes. The whole ship's been retrofitted. It's now well, they've they've added the A. They've added the A to the registry, which I thought was interesting because it's is it that's like a new ship. There basically they've retrofitted this thing so much that it's not even the same ship anymore. It's it's a whole yeah. new ship. Um, Adam, what did you think of that? It was great. I, like again, we just wish they would have slowed this episode down a little more and, and spent some time on that. What else? I mean, they, they focus on the bridge, really, right? That, that's it. But what happened in engineering? What else is going on? It, it was. It was. A, I would have liked to seen more because this show doesn't disappoint in how it looks, and every corner of the ship is interesting to me and i want to see more of it i just want to see more and you know slow down let me, let me, show me how this works you know the, the com badges too like the new like so each of these personnel they have a com badge that's also a tricorder that's their you know obviously their communicator uh also their like personal um smart device that they can kind of do anything on like and run their life on right um Mike, like would, do, michael do you find those kinds of things exciting when you see like all these new technologies and upgrades get added here to this discovery crew i i i enjoy it i enjoy it just as much as i enjoy watching james bond get new tech as well it's one of those things i just i yeah. i enjoy seeing it happen although i'm just like holy crud this thing can do so much uh hope it's not op <laughs> op overpowered Overpowered. Oh, I see. Uh, Jamil thought it was very tight narrative tonight. Um, yeah, I think I have to agree. Like at the episode, I really enjoyed this. I thought that there was uh, two pretty good storylines. A lot of like things moving along with the season. This is a very different season than we've had for Discovery so far. Their first two seasons were very. They were lo these longer story arcs um, that um, that you know they were tied up in different things. This is has that as well, but it's kind of like it's this whole new world, and and there's still sort of like this uh, act of life. It's been three weeks. They a three week jump here, which um, wouldn't really happen in the other two seasons, I think, as much be just because of how those stories were going. Basically, every episode would would start where the other ended you know and this this they actually took a minute minute to breathe here 
Um, and I guess the other thing big thing tonight was this this Burnham mystery or the burn that Burnham is obsessed with, um, which I guess is the overarching story for this season, uh, which they moved along here. But um, Adam, like, it, what, do you think that Michael Burnham's obsession or her taking this upon herself to solve this for the entire universe is a little couple much? things there. She, when, when she first found out about this and went to Saru, she was almost disappointed when he said, um, no, you just can't go. It's like her personal ship now. She's like, you know, and just wanting to go wherever she wants without any, any um, permission <laughs> and, or thinking she doesn't need the permission. Right. But uh, I get the obsession. She was alone in this world for a year. Um, she has a uh, her own little mandate to, to to solve. She needs to go out there and find what what happened. And I'm I'm kind of, I'm buying into the story that you know we can't move forward unless we found out what happened. Either I'm kind of buying into this right now. So I think she did the right thing going. And yeah. and the admiral says as much. He's like, I think this was actually a pretty good thing to do, and I think I would have sanctioned it, but you didn't come and ask for permission. And Michael. Uh, Michael Burnham has got a Michael Burnham here and do sort of her rogue thing constantly. And George is there and she's along for the ride just because, you know, she's up for anything nefarious or anything that's unsanctioned. She, you, she says you had me an unsanctioned mission. Uh, a couple good moments here tonight. But uh, do, are you frustrated with the Michael Burnham character in, in the sense that she can't seem to um, settle? settle down a little bit and let and just like uh yeah you i think she would have gotten through to saru eventually that you know book would it was would have probably been okay you know if if they had come after him in a uh, in a few days or if they, if they had gone even to the if she had pushed even further let's we're taking this to the admiral maybe that was really what she ultimately would have done she would have pissed off saru here but uh probably it would have been a net it would have been better for her than how this all turned out so I, that's a lot. I threw a lot at you. There. So I, where, I, wherever you want to start. Um, I, I, I will just say that this, for me, I wasn't disappointed. In fact, I expected this because this is one year later, Michael. So she, I had mentioned in a previous episode that she hasn't been a Starfleet officer for one year. She's been doing a whole bunch of stuff. And, and one, one of those things that she referenced when she was reminded book of that one thing they did that led to you know the the breakout near the end but they, they've done a lot and this version of michael hasn't settled back into starfleet and i would not expect her to settle back into any of this that quickly just because they're here right so i mean you're correct she probably should have not asked for a almost a rogue kind of mission instead maybe tried to convince saru to, to talk to the Admiral or go with her to the Admiral or whatever. But, I mean, this is the current Michael, right? She's impatient. She's had lots of adventure. And she seems to have problems fully trusting. So well, We have a comment here for Jamil. He's saying that it's not fair to expect Michael to drop um, what was driving her motivation and stick to Starfleet Protocol. Uh, the, do you the, agree with that, Adam? No, I don't. I mean, that's while I like Michael and I, I like the character she's become this season, but she did agree to be the first officer of the Discovery. And there are protocols and there are sacrifices involved in that. Expectations, now, yeah. Correct. Sure. And if she had didn't have access to that little ship, what would she have done? You know, would she have gone, like taken a, another starship that was parked around there? I'm not sure. But, you know, that was just, I mean, it's nice, of course, it's nice to have that in, in the story for her to just go and jaunt around. But like, I, I, I still like the mission. I thought it was really cool how it, how it all played out. But, you know, she did violate, and, and Saru, you could see the disappointment. And he, that was a great scene, by the way, at the end where he's explaining this. Or even when he's talking to Tilly. Um but but you could see just you know what I I, I trusted her again. I, we were beyond what happened for season one, and 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 then it actually reminded me of that when he when he referred to that, you know, 
back then I, I lost trust for her and you and he did like the whole crew did so yeah. you know once again she's disappointed everybody right and i think it's frustrating right uh, for all of us who who you know i think we have affection for her all of the audience in general but sometimes she just she goes rogan here she kind of knew that this was i think she kind of got off light even that she gets to be chief science officer still i don't even know if she should be in starfleet um if she wants to go off on her on her Sherlock Holmes mission to here to investigate the burn, maybe she should have just say like I'm, I'm I really shouldn't be a member of the crew right now. I'm gonna kind of go my own way. Thank you for following me to the 32nd century. And is this really maybe that's where I'm coming from? Yeah, it's like is this all driven by guilt with Michael Burnham? Michael, I, I don't, hmm. I'm not sure about that. I was just gonna say she had to be smacked down before she can get her head back on straight though. I just felt like it was coming. I've been waiting for this episode since the start. I knew that she would be smacked down. I knew she would do something stupid. And here it is, right? right? What her motivation is, I don't know. I don't know if it's guilt. Maybe it is. Maybe she just thinks she has to make it up to everyone. I don't know. I think time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... You got me here from Michael Connor. He says, in every episode this season, Discovery boldly goes into new territory, no different in, than in tonight's episode. Can't wait to see what Disco comes uh, to do with that retrofitting AI. Yeah, I think it's a lot of, it's very exciting that we were in this new era. I feel like this is, like I've been talking about this all season long, but especially tonight that this is not a 23rd century ship anymore. Uh, this is uh, quite, you know, a 32nd century ship that has been with, with, very advanced technology that we only barely scratched the surface of tonight. And if you're into that kind of stuff with the show, as I am, as I am, and about the uniforms, we have to talk about the uniforms too. Wait, but wait, you, you know, this like they didn't. They, I, I, I'm going to come back to this because Mike's kind of right. It, it's you, you get the. Uh, you, you, I wanted more of that uh, opening scene from motion picture, which I couldn't stand back then. I still can't stand it because. <laughs> It just looked boring, but now I want to know more. I want to see everything that they have and and um, and what can it do. And, and it was kind of cool how they were setting up the crew too. They were just like little kids. Ooh, I get my first iPad, and and just this is fantastic. Show me more, you know. Yeah, well, it, it's it's awesome. The fact that this show was a prequel, which I think was a weakness of it early on, I think was like. They kept throwing all this new retrofitted technology. I think it's going to be a problem for Strange New Worlds uh, still because it's set in this particular time period. And if you're if you're kind of a stickler for the canon, which I am, no, uh, yeah, I know you. You, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it takes me a bit out of the show. But in this instance where they're now in this 32nd century, this is whatever. They can do whatever they want here. And the technology is limitless. And the amount of imagination potential that has is what excites me more than anything. Um, I, just to get back to the episode too, and this whole plot here with Georgiou and Burnham tonight, and this whole mission they go off on, and the fact that Georgiou is going through these weird visions slash seizures. Um, what is this storyline? Where is this going? Was this set up by David Cronenberg? We didn't see him tonight. Anyone who wants this, Michael, you take this one. <laughs> oh man, I'm wondering if. Uh... If, if her memory is getting messed up after a time jump, she jumped universes, then time jumped, right? Something's messing her up. Yeah, she's in a different dimension, and now she's gone. Yeah, through a time wormhole. Yeah, so right. she's she's a little but bit of I'm a fish out of water, I suppose. I, I'm also wondering if like he brought out some because the whole point of like we talked about this last episode, but David Cronenberg, the, the director, not the character that he played. He brings out what's inside to the outside, right? So that was the the hint at what's happening with her. So whatever on earth she's she's, I guess, recounting or whatever other maybe another life th that was, I don't know that that's being shoved into her head, maybe. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of time spent on that flashback or flash forward or flash into the Terran universe, whatever it was, where she touched that dead person or dying person. Yeah, there was some blood. We saw some daggers. Yeah, yeah, what kind of dagger was that? I, I uh... look Terran. 
I would say that was it was Terran esque. Yeah, okay. I would say that yeah. that could probably be a Terran dagger. I but I don't know what the context is. I I couldn't tell from these no. little flashes what was going on. You know, she she that character is a pretty amazing. You know, she has no remorse for what she's done in her past, and Maybe it, she does that. Um, well, that that flashback, like it, you, it felt like she had fear or or something was going on there. And very interested to know how this character goes because uh, she comes off the same in every episode and, until now. You know, it, it's become now. Now there's some doubt of, of how strong she is. What if David Cronenberg's character is Taryn, like we suspected? But someone in his line was murdered by her, and he shoved that memory into her. Well, that's a that's as plausible Actually, as anything. Um, sure. But what I what I I I think that this episode tonight for the Georgiou character, the mirror Georgiou character, was big because I think this was the most compelling she's been. I think they're trying to do something interesting with her because I was I was struggling with her in the early episodes because I'm like, well, where does she fit in with this crew? Yeah, why is she here? Why is yeah. she here? What's going on? Why did she come in the first place? And she, I, I, and there was more development of that tonight with um, Michael and her. You know, there's this whole understanding that, yeah, like Michael knew the her version of Georgiou and Georgiou knew her version of Michael. And they have this, now they've had all this experience that they've been together in last season and here now too. And coming into the future together. So they, their relationship's unique even from what they've had before yet they have all this connection just because of the mirror universe aspect of it all. But I think that it was, it was better. I, I think that what we were seeing in these flashes, my idea is this is just flashbacks or, or some kind of, it's somehow going to it's somehow going to redeem Georgiou or it's going to start her redemption arc because I think they need to find a way to fit her in because she, She's been almost like too evil. She came in a little bit too evil. Her whole backstory is a little too evil. So it's a, uh, it's a little, it's tough to then say, okay, and she's one of the gang now. You know, like like they tried to do this on D Space Nine with like Gold Ducat or these other kind of roguish uh, characters. But I think you have to find a way to um, integrate her. Any reaction to that? They, they need to do something with her because honestly, season two, she was the same character. Season one, it, it, it showed who she was. And, and so far, honestly, she's, she's the stowaway who just wants to cause shit. And uh, now we're seeing another person. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just reading that comment there. I didn't hear yeah, that. On that. Yeah, yeah, I was reading it too. My son. Oh, I didn't hear that, but cool. Oh, well, did, did she? Kill I didn't hear time? that either. I didn't, but it's plaus. I didn't put the closed captions on, which maybe I should start watching this with closed captions to see if there's any kind of hints we can uh, pick up from that. But, but they need to do something with this character. Long and short, they they've got to bring her out and put her into a role. Like, a, you know, is she part of the crew? No. Is she going to be part of the crew? Like, what what is going to happen with Giorgio? Yeah. I, I'm. I, I like the character again. I like every character on this show. I just, but. They have to do something with her because she's just right now sort of she's kind of in this limbo state. Right. Yeah. And so they've given her at least I, I think, she, you know, I, I'm very much a fan of this actor, Michelle Yeoh. Right. Like uh, yeah. she's, you know, for, um, a famous act, uh, actor. Uh, she, she's in drag or their yeah, way around. Right. Yeah. And and some great things here with like with uh, Sinequa Martin Green and, and, and the Michael Burnham art. Like they, she has her moments, but like fitting her in i think this moved it along uh pretty well um just just to keep moving on the story too uh we had this whole scene tonight where tilly was chasing around grudge the cat uh in the in the room <laughs> looking for grudge they really were uh they're, they're they're leaning hard into the cat thing uh did we like this michael i enjoyed that grudge match <laughs> adam did you enjoy the scene with this the right. scene was fine, but they're they're clearly making Tilly to be the the comic relief of the show now. It's um, I I had bigger hopes when they were on that planet. I think two episodes ago, 
you know, when she was showing her vulnerable side and, and they were walking with Captain Sarud, you know, to, to that bar. But, you know, she's she's an important role or a cast member, a crew member, mm -hmm. but she's got the comic relief part of it too. And I, I don't know. I, this is a little forced is my sort of thought here because um, – as we were talking about early on, there was a lot to unpack in this episode. They threw a lot at us. There was all this new technology, things they could have shown us, things they, they couldn't really get to, that this could have even been a two-parter. And this scene was a, kind of a slow down moment in the whole pace. Uh, could we have done without this? Yes. It could have been removed and it wouldn't have made a difference, but I still enjoyed it. And I mean, at the end of the day, this wasn't really her episode, so... I'm just yeah. glad she's there. She's gonna say it's a big cat too, man. That's a, yeah, and that's I'm a just, big cat. I mean, she'll, she'll get her moment again later. Although she did have that scene with Saru, that was really good. It was a good scene. It was a good scene. Yeah, no, but, she she had you know that was her best moment tonight. Like, but this mm -hmm. uh, this I don't know if I needed. So she's got the big, you know. But you know what about that? I mean, that, that scene like it, it was good because I mean you were shooting. I mean, Michael, you know, they're shooting with an animal, and clearly. It, the cat is going up the body and they just kept rolling because that, if that's how cats are, you can't control them. That was good. Um, but that, you're coming back to the moment with Saru. Um, again, that Captain Tilly moment again with those two, they've done that twice now. And it's, it's really good. I really like those. Yeah. And, and I thought it was great. Like the fact that she, you know, they talk about she's gone and she, you know, and, and Tilly says you're, you would be right to come down on her. She didn't do the right thing here. I wouldn't, I may have done the same thing. He says, I don't think you would have, I think you would have not had to do this. And it kind of, be, you know, begs the question, will, who will be the new number one after this? Like who does Saru go to now? Is Tilly, 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 is she an option here? Yeah, she's pretty junior. Yeah, it's a that's a big leap to go from Ensign. She would have to get she's she's like jumping four steps in rank right there. Would uh, that be an issue in this futures federation? Perhaps not. You know, like she, well, what about bringing somebody from current current timeline into maybe that, oh, that like, security officer? Yeah, well, maybe or Stamets. He's got not much to do, right? Um, well, I don't know. See gel things. Maybe Detmer, somebody like maybe from the bridge crew. Which, by the way, first episode that they didn't deal with her uh, PTSD. Which yeah, yeah, there was not. She was she had no, nothing really. She just got her combat. She was I think she was part of that, right? Um, yeah. But she was a little bit uh, hesitant about the new technology. Yeah, I mean, she has yeah, she wasn't super her, into right? yeah the, the being yeah. here uh, last week, right? Uh, Jamil just wants to note here. I, I disagree with making Tilly comic relief. Uh, she was shown throughout the episode with her leading the crew and also having that conversation with Saru multifaceted. She's not just comic relief. I agree. She's not me, just comic relief. Let but, me clarify that. I don't want her to be just the comic relief. I like the character a lot. And I really, like I said, I like the relationship between Saru and her. I think it's a, it's a really good bond, either father, daughter, or just mentor or whatever it might be. But they they've definitely put that role on her as well. Every every you know it's the it's the redhead and she's got to do something funny you know and and I hope they don't push her that way. That's all. Yeah, I like I I think that she has all this other things that we like about her. We like how smart she is. We look how she's a genius and she you know she's naturally kind of a funny fun you know character quirky or whatever who's going to be interesting, but. I feel like, you know, like the scene with the cat tonight, it was either for the cat lovers or whatever, whatever, for whatever reason they threw it in here. And she doesn't, I, yeah, I don't think she needs to push that button all the time. She can be more like the, the compelling, capable officer. And, and you remember, I guess it was season two when she started taking command class or, you know, and so it, it could be in the cards, you know, where she is elevated. Who knows? Yeah. Also, maybe this is the grudge scene. Right, this is meant to be the cat's scene in the ep episode. Yes, give the cat some time, man. It would have been funny if they named the cat Spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's my one of my our cat's a spot. Um, just to, uh, I want to talk about also what this storyline tonight was Georgiou and and um, 
and uh, I'm sorry, Burnham, that they run into this Orion guy. I can't, I didn't get the name of the character, but he was like sort of the the big boss on this uh, syndicate planet. They show up this scrapyard, and there's a, you know the kind of this whole scene with uh, Georgiou and him through the hollow com. Uh, early on i thought this was great i thought he was interesting i thought he was kind of dangerous um I, I don't he's not the same one we met or like the same orion we've already met right uh, no 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 uh yeah and, and i did you did you guys like him what were your thoughts there i mean he served his purpose i i mean his acting was good and i i felt they used him properly uh but i didn't really have any strong feelings otherwise i think it could have been uh, any any anyone I, you know, I mean the role was yeah he was perfect for that role as the you know the the, the master of that crew and yeah. and he was brutal and, and and did it great like you know people feared him and that's what he did it was all intimidation and power i will say this they never showed his boss and after they destroyed his aunt his aunt his yeah so so yes his aunt but after they, after they destroyed everything that character is going to come in later well I yeah i would i was i feel like yeah this is like we've run into maybe the some version of the orion syndicate in this time now a few times or like i i know that they weren't the same to orions but they could be connected uh out there they talked about the bajoran market though that was interesting to, to hear and it's also interesting that through all all the star treks they've really never dealt with orions and that you know we've had klingons we've had Vulcans, we've had pejorans we've had caressians but we've never had orions and now we have in two episodes of this where there's a pretty major role for them so and, and yeah. in uh, star trek lower decks devan attendee and, and yes and doran yeah, i like it and dorians yeah they're, they're great but that i mean Enterprise really dealt with those guys. Oh, I didn't watch enough Enterprise to remember. There was a lot. Yeah, there was there was more built on the Orions in Enterprise, and they've leaned into it again here. Um, and there was another Endorian tonight. This this one guy was putting the discs in people's backs of their heads or whatever. Uh, I guess to control them or so that they. I, I'm not really. I they didn't. They they were they were going so fast uh, that you couldn't really keep up with it all. Uh, but book was not happy with uh, how they, you know, they were treated there. Um, and there was that Bajoran guy that ended up getting killed by evil Orion man. Uh, his, Asian whatever. Bajoran, yeah, yeah. I was, I, I yeah. There, I don't think there have been Asian Bajorans yet. That um, was awesome. I was like, yeah, <laughs> no, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes. That's right. Are you serious? Well. <laughs> It's the first. I don't know if he was the first Asian Majoran. I can't really what? say, but um, first one I remember at least. But yes, yeah, no, it was good. It was a good. It was um, it was he he was. I thought that that it was good action here. I was like, sure. I was kind of just like you know, it was great popcorn kind of stuff. I thought that um, it was good did, pace. Did you guys feel like that was the set of Total Recall? <laughs> no, yeah. no, not Total Recall. Pardon me. Um, Running Man. Running Man. Where where Arnold Schwarzenegger oh. is in that? I thought you were talking about the remake of Total Recall, which kind of looks like this. Yeah, yeah, it does too. But I was, I it really reminded me of Running Man. I that that scene no, where... you're you're right, you're right. Actually, I haven't thought of Running Man in a while. That you're right. Uh, the discs in the next, the and the di the discs in the neck were the bombs that would be set up by the pillars. Battle yeah, Royale. I was going to say Battle Royale for sure. Yeah, like um, the whole Another homage. But yeah, everything moving with the episode was great. And then, okay, I, I just want to... David, Dave, you notice they had the um, Andorians antennas were cut down too, which is like yeah. the ultimate, you know... Uh, oh, yeah. That's horrible the, thing for Andorians. You can't take their antenna away. They grow back though. Yeah. But they, they really? don't like it. It's it's a it's a great shame. It's very... Yeah. It's, it's it, There's kind of a stigma. They don't, you know, it's kind of like... I'm not, I don't know what the human equivalent would be, but maybe there's none that exists. Um, cutting an indigenous person's hair, I, I would say, is the same thing. I want to. I want to talk a little bit about Tall uh, tonight, Adira Tall and Gray Tall, uh, I suppose, and uh, in you know th those moments tonight, and the scene with Stamets and everything there. Did uh, 
up, down? Was that sort of a, a hot, you know, how did that fit in tonight for you guys, Michael? Um, I'm glad they addressed it. I am so glad they addressed it and that which part the oh are we talking about uh, near the end when, when Stamet sits down with her well, well the, you yeah. know it's her the, their whole scene well there's a um yeah well, right yes like there's an earlier one where 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 they were in uh, engineering but i'm just glad yeah, that yeah. that was that quick they, yeah i kind of forgot about that actually like so but that they addressed perfect. the fact that she can they can see him um but no one else can but that i'm i'm i just appreciate that stamets then talk to them about it right and and acknowledge that you know that no one else sees sees him and then th to try to explain why they're there right I'm okay yeah well i feel like because they didn't talk about it last week at all it wasn't touched up on no. it, and so i feel like they had to do it tonight but like yeah. um you know it was it um did we need? I, I think we had to, so we did. But was it good? Uh, did you enjoy? I, it? I I I'm loving these characters, all three of them. I'm liking um, it. Stan, yeah. He he has lost the edge of what he was about the know it all. Don't don't touch my stuff. Uh, only I I know what's going on here. I'm responsible for the jumps. He's now open to what? I mean, he had a hell of a last year too. A lot's happened to him, and um, but it's it's for the better for his character. The fact that he was very open to what uh, is going on is in on his engineering deck. He's, it's all torn apart. He goes, what, "What did he call it? It's messy or whatever." He said, "But, um, but he was very open to find out." You know, she changed things in in the in the in the um, what, I don't know what room it's called, but wherever he goes in and you know jumps the ship, right? You know, and but again, just that whole the whole lunch or dinner date thing. It was great. It was a good good feel good uh conversation going on there um i think we learned a lot about all three of those characters in that episode you know and, and the boyfriend too great just the fact that he's still there and it's a, it's a good character yeah. yeah i think it's it was it worked well for me tonight i think that um We'll see how well how long does is Gray going to be around? Is kind of my my the question I can't seem to uh, stop asking myself is 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 Gray here for good? Is Gray here for the the rest of the season? Um, is this something that's going to resolve, or is is this a problem or not? Is this something that Adira should be trying to resolve, uh, like psychologically as a joined person? now or not or is this completely fine and this is this is whatever i don't know like, I, I don't know the answer um i don't even know why i'm asking the question maybe so it's up for discussion but i did enjoy it i i feel like this all really worked well tonight i just felt like it made it more okay i, I don't know if that makes any sense it's just you know it's an it's somewhat of an explanation and it's somewhat of an acceptance of the concept that there's someone there that no one else can see so i don't know moving forward i i'm just totally fine with it and wherever they take it as long as it makes sense i'm good and really this is when star trek's at its best when it's making us it's giving us these kind of thought-provoking questions like how what is this what am i supposed to think and feel and how am i supposed to interpret what's going on here um and you know or what what is the morality of different things so it was it's it was uh but i thought that the the connections between the crew also is a big part of it and and stamets and adira sort of becoming these kindred spirits together i think is going to be um good i think that she's a great or they are a great um addition here for this mm -hmm. for this cast and 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 so is uh and so is book too for that matter we'll see how he's going to fit in long term but the, the only thing I'm getting slightly not worried about, but wondering about it, there's a lot of characters in this show mm -hmm. to, to jam into in an hour, you know, an hour episode. And a cat. And, and now a cat. And, and plus now you've got characters coming from the outside, Orion's, you've got the Admiral, you've got the security officer, I can't remember her name. But, you, you know, there's a lot of characters who are very interesting and they're not all going to get screen time here so it's going to be it's going to be interesting how they rotate through because you know you take the take the other series it's always focusing on 
not always, but focusing on one character and a story about that person and or whatever's going on. But um, I, I'm like again, I'm, I'm, we only have what four episodes left now. Yeah, yeah, only four to go for season three. Yeah. I mean, they well, kicked we have, one, uh, they kicked one off last week. Yeah, they got rid of Non last week. They drove, or she left her. She stayed on bars in. Um, yeah. I'm just yeah. saying they they did they did semi deal with they uh, did but then they brought back book this week depends yeah on so they have a few like kind of like revolving door characters and then they have like this kind of secondary bridge crew background group that like with Detmers and the group of them whose names I can never all remember Lieutenant Reese I think is one of them Reese, um, yeah. yeah like they're kind of like the the B team but they're fun. Um, and, uh, you know, and they're, they're involved in the, in the, in the story and, uh, they get invited to dinner at Saru's quarters, um, uh, as well. And they get the new com badges. There's a lot of fun going on here. The blonde one. She might be the new number one. What was her name? You know uh, what? She might be. She, she, she actually said, I'll take this call. You know, I don't know. what. Yeah. She seems like she's, yeah, I think she's, uh, Saru's going to notice her. I think that that's, uh, there's a good chance of that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, just came back to the whole thing. So we had, I, well, the, we, we talked about the scene with Tilly and Saru. Uh, I thought till I wrote down Tilly, very mature. She's very mature. Tilly. Um, we also had, the, I'm sorry. The Sir, Sir, Ryan, Sir Ryan, whatever, whatever the guy who was using the, um, the jump transporter every, that was oh. the comic really. Yeah. That was comic really. Oh, that was uh, Linus the Saurian he's called. Dorian, pardon me. Thank you. I like that. that. that was... Oh, Mike listened again. Mike, uh, he said, I listened again. Maybe not my son. Sounds more like she says son exa- exacerbated or a name Morning. beginning with S. Hmm. Uh, there's definitely more coming out of that. Yes. 100%. Only four episodes to go. How are we going to get through all this? Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot to do. We have a lot to do, yeah. Like, and, and we're just we, the ship just got upgraded. Like, they kind of just they kind of just got here. It feels like it feels like they're just like okay. Now we're in the thirty second century, everybody. Four to go. Four episodes left. Here, uh, here are a whole bunch of new characters too. Like, but they're doing a good job of it so far. So uh, I'm along for the ride. I'm just a little like, how are we going to do this? But oh. minus. Are, are we going to have a chance to talk about a book's ship transforming or not transforming, pulling apart and putting back together? Because that was freaking cool. Well, the whole action scene. Let's talk about the whole action scene down like on the planet when they when they kind of uh, take over. Well, they, there's kind of a the thing where, where George is having her seizures or whatever's going on. And, um, yeah. you know, it nearly gets them killed. But they, they, they manage to kind of take over and then they take over book's ship and it can do like Lego moves in in the air michael yeah it was kind of cool but, but it because early in the episode we saw discovery's parts kind of coming off and then in that section of the action scene you saw book ship yeah lego apart and lego back together i'm curious to know if discovery can do something similar now Probably we saw like that pro- that programmable matter that the nacelles now yeah. can detach from the ship. Like I think that when we see Discovery now in action, when it does its spore drive thing, it, it might even be more cool than it already was, which was, already was kind of fun to watch. But also so, a dog fight. Can you imagine if like it dodges stuff by like separating and putting? Yeah, itself I'm excited together. to see like what the new space battles are going to be like. Like I I do enjoy that kind of stuff uh, in, mm-hmm. in in the show. Um. Yeah, and Jamil is saying the reference to the ship will be able to separate and rearrange in in the new title sequence. Yeah, we kind of see we see, we've seen we've been seeing these like these kind of weird things and little things they've been hinting at. Um, it's kind of like I I really enjoy what they're doing. It's episodic, but it's narrative and it's moving things along. So let me uh, ask you: Are are a bunch of ships gonna gonna like pull apart and form a Megazord? Because 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 I, I would love that well yeah you can see like a starfleet group come in and then <laughs> yeah here, t- yeah eat your heart out transformers yeah yeah <laughs> megazords or whatever I, I, I think that there's potential here to do a lot of interesting things that they've never done with star trek before so um especially we're seeing the potential here because it's all 
it's also catching up with what special effects have done, what movies like Avengers have done and things like that over the last 30 years since Star Trek sort of had its real, like, you know, last golden age. Um, but I thought that this was fun, a good scene. Uh, again, like a lot to unpack here in this episode because there's just a lot of action fighting. I thought that the fight was good. Um, we also got the further interaction with, well, it was kind of, it was more Adira and gray but gray and i just wrote down gray and stamets because where stam gray was laughing at stamets jokes and it was feeling like maybe gray is real not just a memory or some kind of a projection um like maybe there is some something real there i don't know i don't know how to interpret it yet i hope she doesn't become the wesley crusher of discovery though you know, not Dira? that Wesley was, yeah, Dira, yeah, the prodigy. Well, she's already that. So you know, what, again, what what's the role? So she already her? is the Wesley Crusher of of. Uh, yeah, yeah, she she is. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so all we need now is Taru going. Shut up, Adira. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> Good thing there's no holodeck. <laughs> blue guy lives oh yeah the enduring guy lived i wrote down oh yeah and the fact that he got that neck thing taken out so easily the book why was or why was that such a it a non-issue they made such a thing of it early on in the episode and then it played out to really be me be kind of meaningless in what way I, mean, I, 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 spoke, I expected it like to explode if someone you tried to leave the planet or something. Or, no, I think I think it was just you know another thing that he was controlled. You know, everybody on that planet was controlled by the Orions or Orion, and you know, again, just to get out of that that yoke of of power that that they had over them, and, and it basically says, okay, you're out of that now. Now you're disconnected. You're back on your own. Okay. All right. Well, then, hey, fair enough. I was just kind of, it just, that was what, on the first viewing tonight, it seemed like, well, maybe that's going to mean something. It didn't really seem to, uh, as much as I thought it could have. That's all. Well, I mean, and just if, if you go far enough, your head blows off, right? I mean, that's, oh, like, state. oh, yeah, like Bajoran guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. And then they had to wait until the barriers, the perimeter was disabled to, to be able to move forward. So, you know, there's a bit of kind of, you know, as Giorgio passed out, you know, the, everything took longer and they were panicking that maybe, you know, Burnham couldn't deliver and then she did, right? Mm -hmm. She and Giorgio did. So I, I felt there was there were stakes to the battle royale neck explosion things. No, no, there, it was it was good. It was, I mean I, I'm nitpicking. I admit it, I admit it, but here. Um Jamil says he figures that the neck bomb was also a tracker and that the Ryan Center could planted the Endorian as a double agent and now knows about it. Is that pl Ooh. that's plausible? They said that he was a pariah, that he he might be somehow compromised. Will that's we see the Endorian theory. again with the antennaless Endorian? I, I just I don't I, like if they go down that path, that's a that's an that's another episode. We only got four left. Like there's, I think there's bigger things to do. Then worry about what was going on with him and the Orion Syndicate. Right now, yeah. Right yeah, now, yeah. but that could be a plan for next season. They might be. It, might be a, it could be. It could be something that's further down the line. It could and, and be a right. cliffhanger. Like you never, like the family, the Orion family here. I think. I think they're big, like a big crime family, and they, they're going to have to deal with these guys sometime. But is it going to be this year? I don't know. All right, I, I have a, sp a special thing I want to talk about, which is the uniforms, guys. We need to talk about the uniforms. Where's the uniforms tonight? Uh, it's a damn big cat. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Why did they stay with the discovery look and not go to what the rest of them are wearing? Like all the, the other Starfleet officers, like Vance and them. Or do I have that? I don't have that right now, but I mean I I I have a they I, only I got the combat. They got the com badge, but they need that. I think it's the uniqueness of discovery, and you have to continue that that path. You know, 
Michael, did you find it interesting that that even carried through to the Starch Fleet PJs? And that um, we saw Culber and Stamets wearing their Discovery era PJs now upgraded to. Um, J- Jamie was like, "There are Starfleet PJs." They, they, and I was like, "Yes, we saw the Stamets and Culber wear these in season one." Uh, did, did they already out? have the stuff? Why, why waste? Also, they are their own unit, so their unit needs their own look, and they uh, already yeah. have an existing look. So why not keep it? It's a resource. It's a resource. Uh, uh, they're lacking our resources in the future. It seems Might selective well. on what they're lacking on resources for because they just did upgrade the whole ship. But uh, is it maybe about remembering where you came from? Like, it's totally could be. Could be. yeah, it's the connection to what they are. If you take, if they put them in the uniform, the, there's no difference to me. They they become they've already upgraded the ship. Uh, so now we've got the technology, which is great. But if you take away the uniforms and put them in the new uniforms, which might still happen, I just feel like then they've completely adapted to the future and they're not them anymore. The uniform, I, I agree with you, Dave. Uniforms are very important. And and honestly, Vance's uniform is not great. It's kind of boring. At least there's some color here. Um, yeah, their uniform is better uh, than... Although, actually, I thought that Vance's uniform, in comparison even to the captains tonight... Their uniforms look better than his because they had the kind of like the shoulder things going yeah. on. And there were some interesting designs going on. Um, although I, I'm not a big fan of this, this design with Discovery, just because I think it's a little it's not colorful enough, really, is my I guess my, critis- my critique of it overall. It's just a little too muted. Um, I mean, sorry, they were a, essentially a special ship with special technology that's in the dark. I would have expected something less colorful than a normal Starfleet uniform. Set. Well, it's you know it's blue or and blue and bronze, silver, gold are their kind of accent colors. That's fine, but but I was that part of what I was hoping for for the future was maybe they would get something different, and what maybe we'll see them in the new uniforms. I don't even think that the uniforms they're wearing right now in this show, in the 29th century, are that good. Are the whatever no 32nd but century? Maybe the whole point is when Starfleet kind of builds itself back up then we're going to finally see new then uniforms. We'll get it. it's symbolic right that's what i think i mean the uniforms look bad and are gray and drab because they're not in a good place right now you uh, think it, you, oh that's uh intentional you think that's kind of a it's my interpretation of what i've been seeing it, it represents where they are and, and and consider where they were last season coming you know captain pike's the enterprise uniform which i i love by the way you know very very bold the yellow yeah. um the it's red okay. they, they just look fantastic to shoulders, me shoulders are a little too yeah yeah and uh yeah. the collar it bothers me with the little flap but whatever it's uh it, it was kind of to make it feel connected to these uniforms too which was kind of also the point yeah uh, the the uniform adds to the crew sense of a team. Are they still recovering, or are they just good to go now? How much? It's an interesting question. Like, how much are these people in the thirty second century now? We saw it Saru tonight was part of this briefing with all the captains, and he's just one of the gang. And they were kind of all surprised to find out. Oh yeah, we have this spore drive, and we can go anywhere in the uh, gal universe instantly. And I think everybody in the room is like, what? You know, like what? And he's like, "Oh yeah, don't. This doesn't leave the room. I don't want anyone to know we have this." Um, Did anybody find the age of the captains a little high? Like they were pretty old people. You know, some of them I couldn't tell; they were pretty alien. Um, but yes, I agree that um, that they were. It was kind of all over the place a little bit. I I was observing that the he was kind of Vance was flying out orders at everybody. He's like, "Hey, captain, you you do go do this and you do that." And so he's like, "We're ready to stand by. We're ready to go." And He's like, whatever. We'll tell you. I like I like fans a lot. Like uh, we also had the you know a comment earlier from uh, from from Mike O'Connor here saying Vance was great, and I agree. I love Vance. Vance is is like as much as I love Pike, I love Vance as an admiral because he's like the first admiral to come along who I like, who's like seems to know what the hell they're doing. Seemingly, so know. far not corrupt. So maybe yes. maybe since Ad, I was thinking about Admiral Ross, but then Admiral Ross ended up being corrupt too, didn't he? On D Space Nine. So a little bit. Um, 
acceptable amount, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, talking about uh, what else did I have in my notes? Kissy. Oh yeah, we always, we had the whole kissing between Book and uh, Burnham tonight. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, was that uh, was that good for you, Michael? With the kissing with Book and uh, and Bur uh, Burnham, do you feel like it was well earned? I I think so. I've been waiting for it. I mean, it was pretty obvious they liked each other, and you know, they, she spent an entire episode denying her feelings and. Now she admits to them, so I, I felt it was earned. Are you holding a torch for Tyler, who got a mention tonight from Georgie? She's like, yeah, yeah, remember, remember, remember uh, Tyler, your last romance? That didn't go so well, huh? Um, <laughs> oh, do, you it didn't. do you feel like Tyler? He's in the rearview mirror. It's all about book now. Well, a thousand years have passed. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, she yeah, spent a year of this dude, man, going on okay. crazy adventures. Yeah, I don't even remember Tyler. What's his name? Who's going on? He might show up in Strange New Worlds or something like that too. But we'll see. Um, we we may not have seen the last of of, but, of to that point though. Like what what? So Burnham is now demoted. Book is is Book going to stay on the ship or is he going to go off and on his own ship? Like, and then what does that mean for her? Like unclear, like what, unclear. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a loose end. They I feel like they they're if they don't address the next episode. I would imagine they have to address it in the next two episodes. Uh, where where does Book fit into this show? More He'll than be he... their personal trainer. He'll open a gym on Discovery. <laughs> that is good. Where does that short fit in? <laughs> that Star Trek short that introduced Book in the first. I place? went and watched that again, and it, it, yes, where does this fit in? Like, oh my gosh, there's there's a lot coming. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. A lot to do here. Um, I still, I still suspect that it has something to do with the burn and how that is not the same book. Not oh, it's a different book. It's the same book, but timeline difference. Mm, I think the burn be... has something to do with what, but with that. That's just my theory. All right, well, it's plausible. We don't know where they're going with this, and uh, that that short doesn't seem to fit anywhere. But, um, but we'll we'll see. Uh, and we'll see. Uh, and Mike, you're right. We'll see who San is, or whoever Georgiou cool. said in, in tonight. No, I'm gonna um, go. I have to watch that now. I'm gonna go do that before I go to sleep. Find out what's going on in those uh, those flashes. Uh, yeah. Finally, just to wrap up the episode tonight, uh, the scene with Saru and Michael, just to you know, Michael Burnham, uh, just to get really into that and sort of. I thought it was great, but it's, you know, I'm again, I'm just, I'm, as I'm living through it, I'm frustrated just with Michael Burnham, but I think every, like from Vance to her, they all say exactly the right thing. They're all exactly who they should be. And they're kind of true to their characters and they, they, and they all listen to each other, I guess. Right. Yeah. 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 Like she's not going to leave the show. We know this, so I, I'm just I just don't know where she's going to fit now. Like what? So she's a science officer. Is that going to be enough um, for her? Or is she going to? She's supposed to be the lead of the show, right? Right. And now every time she feels an urge to go solve a puzzle, she's got use of book ship and off they go. Like it. That's not a Starfleet officer. So no, how she? Got, she gonna, but she got smacked yeah. down. She got consequences. So. Maybe the next time she has an idea, she will bring it up the chain, and maybe they will actually sanction her to go. But but yeah, she, like, it didn't seem like it mattered to her that she was demoted. I think she was upset that she disappointed Saru. But I. But those are consequences too, right? Even if she doesn't care about the demotion, the reality is setting in that she hurt people. Yes, she took she took their relationship for granted. And now it's hitting her hard what that means. Because that demotion is not just a demotion, right? It, well, yeah, it's, it's, she'll probably maintain I, her rank in the sense she'll stay a commander, but she No, I, I don't I mean I mean it's it's not the demotion isn't what matters. It, it's 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 the relationship and what that demotion means behind like what's behind a demotion. Right, it's 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 not really about Starfleet at this point. It's about what she did and how it affected others. And now the relationship between her and Saru 
is is not in a good place. And yes, the rest for sure, crew, really. Well, yeah, I think I, I think that's what the, the part that's worth mentioning here is. Yeah, there's definitely the thing between Michael and Saru themselves, but then there's also the part with how the crew's going to deal with this. Remember, Detmer was a member of the Shenzo uh, um, crew as well. She was there when Burnham did the Vulcan hello, when she betrayed Georgiou and, and ultimately got Georgiou killed, right? And uh, and and, and De- that was where Detmer got injured and ended up with her cybernetic implants. So I feel like there's a lot, which is Detmer alone, let alone the rest of the crew who's not, I don't know, you know, th- that uh, in Tilly, right? Like, I think that we're going to maybe see Tilly uh, be upset with Burnham and she might have to um, uh, have some penance here to, you know, to, 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 uh, to read a little bit. Sorry, just taking this off. Um, Jamil says she needs to have an idea and then have it denied and then be okay with it and then trust the chain. Then she would have grown. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And that's probably where they're headed next. That's and maybe right. she she will ascend to the position of number one again. It will depend if Saru fills the spot at all. If Saru does not fill the job, then she probably gets it back maybe by the end of the season. And, and you know what could happen is that he's injured and there's some kind of crisis and she just steps up again and, and takes control, um, which would be a natural you know, s- slide back into that role. Exactly. Okay, so um, anything before we get to ratings? Anything else you guys wanted to uh, touch on? Um, no, just just again, like you know, today today was a big show with lots in it, and I, I think the next four are going to be equally jammed. And you you know, I think it's time to break up the pen and t- start taking some notes every yeah. episode. Yeah, I feel like today was kind of like a a. Uh, indication of of the speed at which they're going to be going for the rest of the season because it, it was a ramp up from the last few for me I, i'm like I, just... I, i'm okay with it but I'm, I'm they okay. add like two two more episodes to the season slot and then they wouldn't have to rush these things as much they could have a they could the show would have a bit more room to breathe wouldn't it yeah. unless this I mean... change in pace has a uh, uh, direction like uh, an end point, and, and so we understand why it's, it's ramping up. Are, are we done this series this year until like 2022 now or 21? Pardon me, I think they just started principal photography for season four. Um, so or like the next, or they're, or they're doing pre production or something. They're like, I know they've been approved for season four and they're getting their stuff together, but it, I would imagine we're not watching season four until this time next year. It right. Will, it so will be. It will be time. likely be. Yes, this time next year. Like, do you remember when Next Generation was doing like twenty odd episodes a season, and, and and now we're down to ten. This is hard. I know. Well, yeah, that's kind of the thing. Is like, how does Star Trek deal with this smaller uh, season for a show like Lower Decks? I think that the ten episodes was great. I think it worked well. I think for Picard, um, I think it was. It wasn't was, enough. Yeah, it wasn't really. It was because they, they, but they only had this one story. So that yeah, was. They just got going on it. And it was like, okay, now, now I'm ready for more. And then we have to wait a year. Yeah. I will admit that, uh, that I have grown tired of shows with over 20 episodes in a season, like all shows with 20 odd episodes in a season. I'm actually okay and happy with less episodes. Even I, and I, I get wanting more, but. As long as they're able to tell good stories within these ten, I'm good. That's a, that's a great point, and you know, I think a couple episodes ago I said, you know, I'm waiting for that dud episode, and we we're not getting it because you're probably right, Michael. They're just getting the best of the best storylines and putting them in. Jamil says he can tell us which race will show up next episode. Uh, uh, I don't know how he knows that, but we let's hear it. Well, let's or rate it. Well, I'm just going to pull up the rating sheet here. Ratings. Oh, is he reading the Internet Movie Database? Is that is there something there that's... Spoiling? No, but there be no spoilers, Jamil. No spoilers. He would never do that. Okay. Um, Jane, if you're out there, if you want to leave a comment uh, for your rating in the comments, uh, Jamil, same thing. 
Um, I want to go to Michael first because I'm always dying to know, will he deviate from his 9.0 ratings? Not yet. Nope. Still 9.0. This, e this is equally as good as every episode that came before it. I am perfectly happy with it. But not... Well, why is it not a 10? Why can't they get the 10, Michael? There is no such thing as a 10 for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Adam, do you have uh, I'm, I'm going to go to an 8 tonight. An 8, an eight tonight? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, the others have not piped up. So I'm going to go to my rating here. And I am going to say... I like this more than last week. I don't know. Ten. Whoa. Oh. So, you know, I maybe nine point nine, but I, I, I don't, I don't even think it's worth it. So I, I'm going full <laughs> ten. Nice. Um, Jamil says it's going to be the Vulcans and or Romulans. It seems uh, that seems what the preview was indicating. He's saying nine point three. Uh, I'm just going to bring that up again, Jamil, giving it a nine point three. So that for the four of us, uh, that comes at a nine point one, uh, which uh, is solid. Solid, not number one. It's third place. Third place this season so far out of the six episodes, uh, and you can see how those things are all kind of shaking out. So, it, like these have been big numbers. We've been talking about it. There's been no duds. There's been no missteps. When it's like, hey, I really hated this episode tonight, or this was this didn't excite me, or what was going on, or I couldn't follow this. None of that. Really all good. Like in, in even the stuff we didn't really totally follow. Whatever. Who cares? It, it didn't really play into things too much. One last thing I think also I didn't touch upon in our discussion. Stamets got rid of his um, his uh, spore drive uh, implants on his forearms or his underarms here, I guess. Um, and which which Culber was very happy about. Um, I, are you glad that this is the end of uh, of Stamets hooking up to the spore drive in this way? Uh, I think it just talks to the technology jump and the, they've acknowledged that they're here and they're, there's more, they're, they're, there's, this is not needed anymore. You know, just like a transporter is not needed anymore. We don't have to, uh, we don't have to hook you up and, you know, it makes them look less cybernetic, I think for, for, um, for Hugh. You know, it's more of a man rather than just a machine. Do you think uh, that they uh, should? I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, I was just going to say it's also easier for crew because now all you need is just two little pillar thingies instead of a whole setup for him when they shoot those scenes. <laughs> yeah. It makes life easier for them. Awesome. Yeah. Just write it into the show. Um, what do you think they'll do with their old transporter rooms now that they don't need uh, transporter rooms? Well, Books, I mean Jim. I was just gonna say, book needs a gym. Book That's needs a right. gym. Cat, cat maze room Ooh, or something like that. I would you like know, that. <laughs> little toys. Uh, maybe they'll put a holodeck in there. I don't know. They could do all kinds of things. <clears throat> all right. Well, I think that that pretty much wraps up tonight's episode. I don't think we could. There's anything else to uh, talk about. We, we we maybe it sounds like the Romulans and or Vulcans. So some, some people with pointy ears are coming in. Uh, safe to say. For, for the next one, I think that's a that's a great place for them to go next. I think that now that this this show is the pacing of this storyline and this season is exactly what I would kind of want um, from the show. And uh, big thumbs up for me. Anything else you guys want to say? No. Thank oh, you. I'm good. All right. Well, thank you both for tonight's episode. Also, check out everything we have here on Live Long and Podcast. We are here four times a week talking about different Star Trek things. On uh, Tuesday nights, we do Star Trek D Space Nine. We're in the middle of season two. We're going. We're re watching every episode in a row on a three and a half year journey. Uh, going to Armageddon Game next Tuesday. Check that out. Wednesdays, we do Star Trek original series Ted Trek um, rewatches with my dad, uh, Adam Woodward, Jody Simpson, and my brother Jeff. Uh, we're, what is the episode we're doing next? Um, I, I did have it. Um, 
in mind. Adam, uh, I can't remember right now. I did, I've already done it and I forgot. Oh, it's called the immunity syndrome. And we're going to be talking about that next Wednesday. And then Thursday, we'll be back to Star, Star Trek Discovery. Also, this Saturday, we're going to be doing Star Trek Radio Theater, doing an episode of the original series called... Um, what am I doing? Uh, it's called Who Mourns for Adonais? Um, and uh, it's where the Greek god Apollo comes back. We've got a Michael Chan. we got Jessica Chan. We're going to have uh, my brother Jeff. we got Kevin. we got my wife Jane. Mott's here. He's going to be Chekhov. I'm playing Scotty. This was going to be fun. Check all that out on uh, on Saturday. And, uh, and we're, we're, well, we're going to be making a big announcement, too, on uh, this weekend. Because I don't have the post ready for tonight. I was going to make it here, but... It's not ready yet. So check that out Saturday night. Um, and our other channel, Super Mater Brothers Podcasting and Trivial Debates. Trivial Debates is our, our show where we argue about movie, sports, TV, and more. And we're going to be having our uh, our show on November 29th. Jamil Robinson hosting. Um, and we're going to have Christy Moore. Adam, are you confirmed now? I'm in. You're in? He's confirmed. Yeah. Uh, and we're, and I think we got our third guest. I got to book that person tomorrow. So we're going to have these three people competing: Chris Seymour, Adam Woodward. Uh, I'm excited for you to, to talk to Chris. Um, and so this is going to be good. And check all that out. Um, and, and and thanks so much, everybody. Live long in podcast.